I have no disclosures except for the one that Dr. Chandraker mentioned that I work at up to date. So let's get into the first uh, case. It's going to be a case-based board review. So you have a 45-year-old uh, woman who's presenting to you after avoiding medical care for the last 10 years. Her blood pressure in your office measured once is 151 over 96. Both of her parents had high blood pressure. Uh, her exam is normal. Uh, so which of the following are potentially appropriate next steps and which one is wrong? So which should, is, is not the right answer? Uh, can you do a 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, home blood pressure monitoring? Would you begin amlodipine or schedule at least two return visits for, to your office uh, spaced by at least one week in order to me measure the blood pressure again? So which one is incorrect? So most uh, chose C, which is the correct answer. How the question, this question is posed to, uh, to ask how do you diagnose hypertension? Um, there are a variety of ways to do it. According to the NICE guidelines, uh, you can diagnose hypertension in your office if the blood pressure is very high, 180 over 110. Uh, you can start with an, uh, antihypertensive therapy right then and there. However, if you have a patient in your office with a blood pressure over 140 over 90, uh, you should confirm the diagnosis in uh, one of several ways. You could offer 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure monitoring to confirm the diagnosis with home monitoring as an alternative. If you're going the route of home monitoring, the recommendation is to have your patient measure their blood pressure twice a day at home, once in the morning, once in the evening, each time twice. So that's four readings a day for four to seven days. Discard the first day's reading and average the remaining day's readings. If you're going to use home readings or ambulatory monitoring to diagnose hypertension, um, the blood pressure of 135 over 85 or above is considered hypertension. Uh, stage 2 hypertension, at which point you would initiate combination therapy, uh, is 150 over 95 or higher. After diagnosing somebody with hypertension using home monitoring or ambulatory monitoring, it's okay to use office blood pressures unless there's a large discrepancy between the home and, or ambulatory readings and the office readings. You can also use office-based readings uh, to diagnose your patient with hypertension. There are a number of uh, steps that must be taken. Uh, you've seen these all before. Have your patient seated for five minutes um, quietly. Use an appropriate sized cuff. It's okay to put the cuff on a sleeved arm, just not over a very thick clothing like a sweater. And if you're going to roll up the sleeve, make sure it's not creating a tourniquet effect on the arm. Uh, and take the blood pressure in both arms because if you see a large discrepancy, that could be important in diagnosing your patient with vascular disease. Um, why do you need three visits in order to uh, diagnose hypertension? The reason is here in this very old study from 30 years ago. Um, between the first and the second visit, uh, your patient will have an average drop in blood pressure of about 10 millimeters of mercury systolic. There's also another large drop in blood pressure between the second and third visits, after which, when your patient is coming back to you, there's unlikely, on average, to be a big change in their office blood pressure. If you're going to use office as opposed to ambulatory or home readings, uh, this you've seen a million times before. Hypertension is 140 over 90 or above. Stage 2 hypertension, 160 over 100 or above. Um, keep in mind that these are the JNC7 guidelines from 10 years ago, and we've been promised JNC8 for several years now, and it still has not been released. Although um, the definition of hypertension based on office readings is not going to change in JNC8. So the answer here is that it would be inappropriate at this point to begin amlodipine. So for most of this first talk, we're going to talk about what is gold blood pressure in various patient populations and how do you get there, meaning what medications to use. So here's the next case. 51-year-old man is returning for follow-up of hypertension that you diagnosed six months ago. Uh, he attempted lifestyle interventions, but despite these lifestyle interventions, his blood pressure today is 149 over 94. He's not taking any medication. So which of the following is the most appropriate next step? Start antihypertensive therapy with a blood pressure goal of 140 over 90. Start antihypertensive therapy with a blood pressure goal of 130 over 80. Or uh, antihypertensive therapy is not indicated. Okay. 
Um, so again, this patient does not have vascular disease or CKD as it, or diabetes, as it says there up at the top. Where do we get the blood pressure goal uh, in patients with hypertension? Well, back in 1970, there was a VA study which showed that if you have patients with moderate to severe hypertension, diastolic blood pressures of 105 to 114, initiating antihypertensive therapy over four to five years has a huge effect on cardiovascular events, reducing events from 32 down to 8%. What about patients who have more mild uh, degrees of hypertension? So a follow-up to that study, uh, and many studies, when considered altogether in a meta-analysis, uh, patients who begin with more mild hypertension, diastolics of 90 to 104, there's still a significant reduction uh, in cardiovascular events from antihypertensive therapy over four to five years, but the, the effect is much less. The absolute effect is about, is about a 0.7% reduction in MI and a 1.3% reduction in stroke for a total absolute reduction in risk of 2% over four to five years. What this means is that you need to treat about 50 patients, such patients, with antihypertensive therapy over four to five years in order to prevent one stroke or MI, one cardiovascular event. What if your patient has a, a blood pressure that's on the more mild spectrum of this 90 to 104? So let's say your patient has a blood pressure of 145 over 95. Uh, there really aren't any trials specifically in that population of people with very mild hypertension. And specifically, there are no trials in patients with that degree of hypertension who don't have any cardiovascular disease. We do have trials, like I mentioned before, in patients with um, higher blood pressures, higher systolics and diastolics going up to 100. And a meta-analysis was published last year in which they took people who had no previous cardiovascular disease in those trials. This was a Cochrane review. So mild hypertension, no pre-existing coronary disease. And they found that antihypertensive therapy over four to five years actually had no significant effect on mortality, although there was a small but insignificant effect on mortality, no effect on stroke, and no significant effect on MI. So the goal blood pressure of 140 over 90 has actually come under scrutiny in patients with mild hypertension and no pre-existing cardiovascular disease, challenging whether we should start antihypertensive therapy in such patients. However, you can imagine in somebody with severe hypertension and pre-existing cardiovascular disease, treating them for four to five years, they're very likely to have an event, and you are likely to be able to detect that in the course of a randomized trial. However, if you have a very low-risk patient with mild hypertension and no cardiovascular disease, perhaps four to five years is not long enough to determine a beneficial effect of antihypertensive therapy. The other thing to consider is that when JNC8 comes out eventually, the blood pressure goal in such patients is going to still be 140 over 90. So the answer here would be A, begin antihypertensive therapy with the goal blood pressure of 140 over 90. All right. An 85-year-old woman is seeking a second opinion because her primary care doctor uh, wants her to take lisinopril hydrochlorothiazide to lower her blood pressure. She takes only over-the-counter medications, fish oil, vitamin D. Uh, her clinic blood pressure and her home blood pressure are consistent with each other, so she's taking her blood pressure at home. And they've ranged from 158 over 60 to 180 over 77, and this is consistent with a diagnosis of isolated systolic hypertension. She doesn't have any diabetes or pre-existing vascular disease, but her mom died of a stroke at age 77. She walks for exercise. She doesn't drink alcohol. And on exam, she appears well. Her blood pressure is 172 over 71. She has a 2 out of 6 murmur and an S4. Her renal function is normal and her urinalysis is normal. So you should tell her that, A, she should have 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure because she probably has white coat hypertension. B, isolated systolic hypertension is normal with aging and does not need to be treated. C, although isolated systolic hypertension should be treated in most patients, She's 85, and there are no data pertaining to women of her age. Or D, taking lisinopril hydrochlorothiazide could reduce her chances of dying or developing heart failure in the next two years. Okay, most people chose C or D. So there have been randomized trials of uh, older adults with isolated systolic hypertension. Uh, one, for example, was the systolic hypertension in Europe study, 
uh, which enrolled about 4,700 patients older than age 60 with isolated systolic hypertension, diastolics less than 95, to a variety of different antihypertensive therapies, or placebo, and followed for two years. And what they found in this study was that antihypertensive therapy reduced the risk of a variety of cardiovascular events, stroke, um, MI, heart failure, and total CVD. But most of these individuals were in their 60s. However, there was a trial published in 2008, the HIVET trial, the hypertension in the very elderly, uh, which enrolled patients with isolated systolic hypertension who had blood pressure, uh, who, who were over the age of 80. This was about 4,000 men and women uh, with blood pressures greater than 160, and they treated them with antihypertensive therapy, thiazide diuretics with ACE inhibitors as a second step, with a goal blood pressure of less than 150, or they received placebo. And it was stopped early after 1.8 years when they found that the incidence of fatal strokes was significantly reduced by 39%, and the incidence of heart failure and all-cause mortality were also reduced. So the correct answer here is D, that taking lisinopril and hydrochlorothiazide are likely to uh, reduce her chances of dying or, or developing congestive heart failure in the next two years. So you begin therapy, and she follows up with you three weeks later. Uh, over the past week, her average blood pressure is now 148 over 65. Uh, her blood pressure in the office is similar. And she says she's doing okay with the therapy. However, occasionally when she gets up, she feels a bit dizzy. Uh, the question here is, what is her goal systolic blood pressure, and should she receive additional therapy? Um, a, her goal blood pressure is less than 140, and so you should start additional therapy. B, her goal blood pressure is less than 140. However, given her occasional postural symptoms, it's okay to withhold additional therapy. C, her goal blood pressure is less than 150, and so she's at goal. And D, her goal blood pressure is less than 160. She is, goal. She is at goal. All right, B and C. All right, the goal blood pressure in patients with isolated systolic hypertension has not been firmly established. It's still controversial. Uh, there are three trials, two of which I mentioned, SHEP, Sistier, and HIVET, were all drug versus placebo trials. They were not goal blood pressure trials. And for the most part, nobody in those trials had, was able to achieve a blood pressure less than 140. Uh, that said, in the accomplished trial, which wasn't specifically isolated systolic hypertension, but had a number of patients who had isolated systolic hypertension, there were elderly individuals who were able to achieve a blood pressure of less than 140. So we recommend, this is up to date, and the American Heart Association, a blood pressure less than 150 in such patients, but suggest a blood pressure less than 140 meeting the goal in other, other hypertensive patients if it can be achieved without producing significant side effects and without lowering the diastolic blood pressure too much. This is consistent, as I said, with the American Heart Association. So the answer here would be B, is that our goal blood pressure is consistent with the goal in other individuals. However, it's acceptable to uh, withhold additional therapy given her low diastolic blood pressure and her occasional symptoms.